friends, welcome back to L'Amore La Musique. I'm not as prepared as I want to be to do this video. I pulled up my Word document on my computer that said notes for therapeutic bathing vid and it's completely empty. I thought maybe I had taken some notes, but here's the thing. I could sit here and talk about this topic all day. I'm just feeling like I just wanna get this information out it doesn't have to be complicated. I'm gonna share a bit about my journey into therapeutic bathing, but it's really the right time to get this video out because in light of the global situation, I feel like the information that I'm gonna talk about today is a tool for you to be empowered in your own health. I don't wanna get into any kind of debates or anything about that. What has awoken in me during this time is what I can do for self-reliance to promote good health in for myself, for my family, for my community. I want this information to just be inspiring, empowering, thought-provoking, and really just think of it as a tool for your health and well-being. Obviously, the big disclaimer is that this is not medical advice. I am not a medical doctor. I am a PhD, but I am not a medical doctor. I am a health seeker. I have been a health seeker for my whole life. If you go back in the years since I've had my channel, I've done things like liver flushes and Vipassana meditation retreats. I mean, I've just done a lot of health seeking and experimenting, and I'm really excited to talk about my journey into therapeutic bathing. I came to develop a bathing practice after, I guess a bit during pregnancy, but it was really after I had a baby in November of 2018 and I was kind of coming out of my immediate postpartum haze, so maybe three months after I had had a baby. I had definitely taken baths during pregnancy mostly for the very common pain associations that come with growing a life in your body which include usually just a lot of lower back pain and hip and pelvic pain because oh, there's just a lot of spreading happening and it can be painful so i would take not that often like maybe a bath a week i would maybe not even like a couple baths a month i was never a big bather before not because I wasn't attracted to the idea, but honestly, mostly because I lived in apartments that just didn't have bathtubs that you would necessarily want to be soaking in. I have my baby in November of 2018. I'm coming back into my body through things like pelvic floor physical therapy, acupuncture, some herbal support. It was really good timing, divine timing, I guess maybe we could say for my life, that Beauty Heroes featured some limited edition discovery with the bath brand Persoma. So I have always said Persoma. However, I have heard Shannon Vaughn, the founder of this company, pronounce it Pure Soma. So I'm not exactly sure. I'm going to say Persoma because Jeannie Jarno refers to them as Persoma, but it might actually be Pure Soma. Beauty Heroes featured two, I want to say two or three, discovery bundles. With, I'm just getting out my all of my Persoma empties because I had a real, a real moment with Persoma. So I consider Persoma to be kind of my awakening to what a bath could be and beyond the popular connotations of like taking a bubble bath and please keep in mind i'm coming from an american perspective bathing is not a part of the culture here the way it is in lots of other countries like turkey and russia and the middle east where like community bathhouses are much more of a thing full body scrubs and wraps and bodywork in general seems to be much more a part of the culture globally and it's just really not here in the states so i'm speaking from that perspective persoma was the first time that products that could be more than just like a relaxing bubble bath came into my life i had also been exposed to the idea and power of therapeutic bathing through infiore which has been just a huge influence and inspiration for my own explorations of beauty and health and i had remembered that dr linda lancaster who we're going to talk about in a minute was interviewed on the infiore blog it's called the infiore journal and they have an interview series i think it's called on beauty and they had interviewed linda lancaster let me get back to persona for a minute beauty heroes had created these bundles 
of Persoma products and I fell in love immediately. The very first Persoma bath I ever took was the Minerals de Mer. Let me see because I'm sure I have one here. <laughs> of a lot of empty persona yes minerals de mer absolutely loved it i felt a difference just from this one bath packet and of any bath i had ever taken in my entire life so i can honestly put my full endorsement and support of this brand and these products just from taking this one bath alone however the products are very expensive i think it can take a little bit of education and getting over the fact that one packet of persoma products is meant for one bath after you take a persoma bath at least this was my experience I just felt like I had never felt after a bath. I started sweating in the bath, which is what you want to, what you really do want to happen during a detox or a therapeutic bath. I was tired. I slept really well. I woke up the next day. I felt completely refreshed. My skin looked better. And I was like off to the races after just this one experience. So I went on to purchase of my own accord everything in Persona's range. And I'll tell you the highlights. My favorites ended up being the hot tub bath, the resurrection bath, and the minerals de mer. So this is a very basic bath. This is just uh, sea salt, brown algae, and green algae. The sourcing on Persona products is absolutely impeccable. I can direct you to several interviews I've heard Shannon Vaughn give about their sourcing. Um, I think there's two podcast episodes I'm thinking of. I'll link them in the show notes if you want to learn a bit more about the brand. Hot Tub Bath and Resurrection I like a lot because they have clay in them, which my body responded really well to. Um, Hot Tub Bath has ginger powder in it, so it's wonderful for the winter time and if you're fighting off a cold. Um, Resurrection was the most intense one. This is French green clay, sea salt, brown algae, and green algae. Um, just so amazing. I did also try Digital Detox, which I liked, but Minerals de Mer, honestly, for just like a pure salt bath, I thought Minerals de Mer, it's also one of their less expensive ones at like 13, 13 or $14. The, these big ones with the clay packets are more like 35 to 38 or maybe even more so they are pricey for an at-home bath i tried après savasana i was so so on this i didn't love the essential oils all that much but minerals de mer i just have gone through so many of so lots of persoma as you can see i also tried all of their scrubs uh, which are also really beautiful the refresh and then i this was probably my favorite one the renew i the only persona product i have yet to try is the coffee body scrub i'm just trying to find the right moment to do it but the renew one i love i was a little underwhelmed by the refresh as you can see i went through a lot of persona products and here's where we're at in the timeline i have a baby in november i started taking these baths let's say February or March maybe the following summer August of 2019 I took a trip to San Francisco with my family to see my sister and her family every time I'm in the area I like to drop in and treat myself to an Infiore facial at International Orange I actually did a whole video recap of that experience on my channel. I think it's called Destination Beauty. I'll link it for you below. Now you will know that I have been an Infiore follower and devotee for a very long, very long time. Um, the brand is extremely inspirational for me. It's extremely resonant. It always has been since I first learned about them many years ago. These facials at International Orange are completely life-changing. This one was particularly potent for me because like I'm saying, my postpartum period was just such a big, like this is very melodramatic sounding, but really kind of like an awakening and a very transformational year. I mean, it's continuing to unfold, but it was really that first year way more activating for me as a person than my actual pregnancy was. Um, birth was also like its own experience, but it was really this transformative postpartum period where I was not my, the same person as I was before. I was becoming someone else. I was a mother. My relationship with my body was very different in a lot of ways. My higher sensory perception was really different. So a lot was just changing for me. So this particular in Fiore Facial at International Orange had a very, again, like activating resonance for me just at the time and what I was going through. This led to a deep dive where I spent a couple of weeks reading every single post on 
on Infiore's blog. Now, mind you, I've always kind of kept up with them, but never in such like a concentrated way. And you know, I've taken breaks because I get into other stuff of, because of, you know, what I do with a little more. But I was in such a concentrated Infiore perspective. And I reread this interview that the Infiore, Infiore blog had featured with Linda Lancaster. And also bathing is a really big part of Infiore as a brand. It figures into a lot of their content. I was already taking these Persoma baths. And so it was like made so much sense for me to just explore this idea of therapeutic bathing. And as luck would have it, Linda Lancaster had just come out with a book. So Linda Lancaster is actually uh, Julie Elliott's naturopathic doctor, and she refers to her, Dr. Linda, a lot in her work. So I picked up the book immediately. I'll have it linked for you down below if you want to check it out. You can see my baby has already attacked this book. I'm about halfway through, <laughs> um, but I have skipped around and I have like reread over and over the section on therapeutic bathing, which is a real cornerstone of Linda Lancaster's prescriptive approach to harmonic healing. So Linda Lancaster is a naturopathic and homeopathic physician. She splits her time between Santa Fe and New York City, I believe. And she founded something called the Light Harmonics Institute, which is an energy medicine clinic and educational center based in Santa Fe. I would recommend picking up this book and reading it. The therapeutic baths are not complicated at all. They are much less expensive than the Persoma baths. The Persoma baths are still a treat. I like to have some of the clay-based ones around just uh, for something a little bit different. Let's now just break down the basics of therapeutic bathing and I'm going to tell you the exact products that I use, how I use them, how often I do this. Okay, per harmonic healing there are three main types of therapeutic baths. Now if you go online and start googling around on therapeutic baths or detox baths, there's not a ton of information out there and some of it is actually conflicting. So what I'm going to share with you is just what I have learned through Linda's work, through asking questions back and forth with Julie Elliott, who is like a master therapeutic bather. Um, she's been a wonderful resource for me and just kind of my own research, my own proclivities and intuition. So the three main types are sea salt and baking soda apple cider vinegar, and Clorox. Let me start with the sea salt and baking soda because it's really kind of like the cornerstone and definitely a, a nice segue from the Persoma baths. I'm referencing pages 158 through, I think, let's see, 158 through 160 in Harmonic Healing details these uh, therapeutic baths. And I'm I'm not gonna get into all of the science, both sort of conventional Western science and medicine, as well as vibrational medicine and etheric medicine and subtle energy and things like that. You really can read the book if you wanna learn more in detail about the real promise and deliverance, I guess you could say, of these baths. What they are doing in a nutshell is restoring cellular health, integrity, and communication, and each of the baths do something a little bit different. Okay, so sea salt, and baking soda. This is for neutralizing most types of radiation. So if you're someone that flies on an airplane regularly, not that anybody is doing that right now, but if you have been or if you will in the future be taking a lot of flights, if you get x-rays at the dentist's office or wherever, um, if you exist in the world and are exposed to radio waves, EMF, all of that, this is what this bath is good for. So it's one pound of sea salt to one pound of baking soda, which which comes out to two cups of each. So you want two cups of sea salt and two cups of baking soda. My favorites for sea salt, and I've tried and experimented with different things. I have bulk ordered uh, French gray sea salt from a company called Saltworks. I think it's just seasalt.com. Um, I like the brute grain. And I liked this because it's very, very close to the Minerals de Mer Persoma sea salt. I've ordered a bunch of this and then more recently I did a big order of this Jacobson Italian sea salt which is a kosher sea salt. This was a Julie Elliott recommendation that she did on Instagram some months ago and I just remembered it and I know this is one of her favorites. So this is a two pound box. It's enough for two baths. It looks like this. So I already took one bath, measured out two cups in my last bath. And so this is what you need for one bath. This is two cups of sea salt. And then my baking soda, um, I don't have it here, but I had found a, I think it's like a gallon container. I'll link it down below, although it hasn't been available on Amazon for a while. 
Um, it's just, uh, it's labeled an organic aluminum free uh, baking soda, that's really the only thing you want to look for is a baking soda that doesn't have any added aluminum because there is trace aluminum, I think, in baking soda. Anyway, I don't want to get into that deep, those details, but I just placed a big Bob's Red Mill order for these one pound bags of baking soda. So this is what you need for one bath. So that's the sea salt and baking soda. Those are some of my favorite products, but really like you can pick up what you see at the grocery store. You just can get a better price if you bulk order stuff. Okay, the apple cider vinegar bath. I love the apple cider vinegar bath. You want to do two to four cups. You can do like a full pint or 32 ounces, which is like usually what I do, but two to four cups. Of, I would just get like a raw organic unfiltered like with the mother is usually how they're labeled apple cider vinegar and these this bath is for elimination of uric acid deposits and carbon chemicals this is also the one that seems to have the most aura clearing effect so I've tried a bunch of apple cider vinegars um, I've tried the Trader Joe's ones these are 16.9 fluid ounces I have tried oh I thought I had oh yeah I've tried the Whole Foods raw apple cider vinegar but the best one or at least the most cost-effective one are the Kirkland raw and unfiltered organic apple cider vinegars from Costco. Now, I do not have a Costco membership, but my in-laws do. So we borrow their card and go and get a very few select things from Costco, including me stocking up on these apple cider vinegars. They come three to a thing for like $8. So not expensive at all, and I just use one whole 32 ounce bottle per bath. Okay, and then the last, the Clorox bath, you just get regular old Clorox from wherever you shop for these sorts of things. So this bath is for the elimination of heavy metals, chemicals, metallics. It's really the most like drawing bath of the three in my experience. You're supposed to use three quarters of a cup of Clorox in a whole full bathtub. However, I have things to say about that. I do think um, it's important to read this. Use only Clorox brand. Do not use scented powdered bleach, bleach crystals, or any other brand of bleach. So it really just has to be regular Clorox. I want to read this little note to you because it's it's been helpful for me in kind of like getting over the mental block I have with taking a bath and diluted Clorox. Clorox is a salt. Clorox bleach is made by combining chlorine and caustic soda or sodium hydroxide. Chlorine is bubbled into a solution of water and sodium hydroxide, converting all free chlorine into a solution of sodium hypochlorite. Clorox brand bleach is a 5.25% solution of sodium hypochlorite and water. Because of this, Clorox bleach becomes an oxygenator when diluted into a bath or soak. It is a simple naturopathic treatment of a salt bath with oxygen and has been used therapeutically for over 75 years. The Clorox company has not been contacted for consent and is no way responsible for methods of use other than those listed on the product packaging. I think that's really important to say just because I feel like there's so much misinformation out there steering people away from something like this and and it gets misrepresented. So for example, an account like the EcoWell on Instagram, I feel is very guilty of doing this. I don't deep dive into that account that much because it really pisses me off, but I've seen her post just really misleading things like, oh, pseudoscience people are saying that you should drink bleach as a way to kill virus. I mean, it's it, this, and I could just see this kind of thing getting twisted online in a way that does a disservice to what these baths are actually, uh, actually doing and are really meant to be a very empowering health tool. My experience with these baths, or let me talk about the frequency actually, it's hard to wrap your head around, but ideally you would work your way up to taking four to five baths a week. And that's a big commitment and it's just not feasible for a lot of people. I would say I am three baths a week and sometimes I can get up to four, but they are a commitment, you know, from start to finish, like drawing the bath, soaking in the tub, you wanna soak for 20 to 30 minutes. 
yeah I, I didn't say that but you want the water to be comfortably tolerably hot so you don't want to make it so hot that you feel like you're gonna pass out and your skin is getting really really red but you want it to be hot so that your body will break into a sweat that's really the therapeutic effect that you're getting and then when the water cools there's like this osmotic energy exchange and things that are happening like not even in the observable third dimensional reality so if you read the book some of that stuff will come through a little bit more the sea salt and baking soda is really the cornerstone i try and do two of those a week it's very relaxing it makes me usually pretty sleepy. Um, I just kind of want to go to bed afterwards. The apple cider vinegar bath is really the most kind of, as I said, uplifting. It feels very clearing. It feels like you've kind of taken a bit of a weight off. You also don't really smell like apple cider vinegar. I've heard people say like, oh, I don't want to smell like a salad dressing. I don't know. I find them very enjoyable. Now the Clorox bath is the most difficult one for me and I think probably for a lot of people. So the recommendation is three quarters of a cup in a full bathtub. So I did that. It actually took me a long time, like months, to work up the courage to even try this bath. Three quarters of a cup was way too much for me. So I basically just got kind of sick. And when I say I got sick, I just felt extremely like kind of like, ugh, like nauseous. And I what that can signify is that your body is just kind of like releasing too much too quickly. I've done enough detox work that I know when like I kind of know the pace my body needs to go at. So it was too intense for me. I dropped it down to I think a third of a cup. And now I toggle between a third of a cup to a half a cup. In in a full bathtub and I'm kind of just taking it slow and building up I try and do one of those a week so ideally you're supposed to rotate all of them some people need certain baths more than others but in lieu of everybody having access to dr. Linda as their personal naturopathic doctor or having another naturopathic doctor who prescribes therapeutic baths um, you just kind of have to trial and error for yourself and see what how the baths make you feel so if you feel like you're someone that's had for example a lot of mercury exposure or if you eat a lot of tuna or sushi these it's just a reality these things are accumulated in our body burden it's another reason that eco well pisses me off is that she's so ignorant of the fact that we all by virtue of living in the world today have chemical body burdens i mean this is like empirically proven <sighs> breathe a third to a half a cup for the clorox bath i have found really actually quite powerful success with powerful success with however this bath is still my least favorite i have been told that over time it becomes your most favorite but um it's just a more like intense process it's kind of unearthing things getting things moving and that's the bath that i tend to kind of need to lay on the couch for a bit and kind of like recalibrate it's not the most pleasant but it's also not awful so here's a couple of important things to keep in mind if you're going to undertake these yourself you don't want to mix things together so i've seen things online talking about therapeutic baths where it's like you add the sea salt and the baking soda and then you add the apple cider vinegar no you don't want to do that in my experience or from in my knowledge and my research you don't want to do that like they are discrete baths and you don't want to mix them another thing is 20 to 30 minutes is how long you want to stay or in they say she says in the book until the water cools but i just find that i totally meet my threshold at 30 minutes um sometimes 25 25 to 30 minutes but like if i've been in there longer than 30 minutes i just like my my body kind of starts to reject it so i think you'll know when like the time is up you don't want to add more hot water to the bath while you're in i have had this happen where i've made baths too cold initially and it's just kind of like a waste because the water cools too quickly or my body never breaks into um, a sweat sometimes i sweat more than others no bath is going to be like the same just based on different things that your body is ready to process or release i mean healing health and healing is such a complex individualized journey it really is that so these are guidelines and ultimately i feel like we're all responsible for you know developing our own discernment and taking things at our own pace you know you're not gonna hurt yourself doing these baths do you know what i mean like they're a very safe tool i, th I feel like anything that would try and direct you away from that is just 
blatant misinformation. Only you will know if these are right for you. I think that they are such a wonderful, cost-effective, de democratic tool if you have access to a bathtub. And even if you don't have access to a bathtub, you can take foot baths. You can just get a big bowl and put some sea salt and baking soda in a foot bath and you can get a similar effect. I've been reading about that. Someone like Organic Olivia is very good to follow on Instagram because I've seen her posting about the benefits of foot baths and she has shown research that demonstrates how it can be just as effective as a full body submerging. If you make the bath too hot, you probably will feel sick and lightheaded. I have done this. I mean, how else do we learn except by trial and error. So I'm always looking for the sweet spot of the bath being pleasurable and like enjoyable to soak in and just hot enough so that I get that sweat, but not so that I'm like dizzy or feeling kind of ill or just like my skin is turning red because it's too hot. Yes, we could also talk about how baths are using a lot of water, but I mean, I just think this is a really important tool for people's health. So we're just gonna kind of have to bracket the potential environmental implications. I have wondered if using filtered water, because whole other discussion, but tap water can just have, depending on where you live, can have a lot of contaminants in it, like lead and pharmaceuticals and any number of undesirable things. But in my research and what I have learned, um, you don't need to use filtered tap water for a therapeutic bath. It's almost like the constituents, I don't know if they negate any harmful chemicals that could be in your tap water in the bath water, but um, I think the benefits of what the temperature of the water and these ingredients or combination of ingredients in the case of the sea salt and baking soda are doing outweighs, uh, you know, whatever is in the tap water. But if you're someone that has like reverse osmosis throughout your whole house, then, you know, lucky you. <laughs> oh, one other key thing, and then I'm going to let you go. And my time to be recording is running out. Um, dry brushing. This is a really integral part of this practice. Um, this is the Persoma dry brush. I have dry brushed on and off for many years. Um, if you don't know about it, it is taking a body brush like this and using a particular technique to stimulate lymph movement throughout the body on dry skin. So this is something uh, ideally we should all be doing daily uh, before a shower or especially a bath um, because also what the baths are doing is interacting with your lymphatic system. So some for some people, you know, the lymphatic system is a big source of uh, stagnation or something that they need to work on for other people. I've never particularly had issues um, lymphatically, but I feel like it's just good preventive practice. And also it just feels feels nice. So I have the Persoma dry brush. I also have this Hydrea London dry brush, which is a little stiffer. I alternate between both and I would recommend the lymphatic message. I think is her name on Instagram as a lymphatic drainage or lymphatic self massage lymphatic education resource because she is wonderful. And also in harmonic healing, uh, Dr. Linda has, I think writes about dry brushing in here. Um, so dry brush before the bath. Oh, a couple other things. I keep thinking of things. I have seen conf conflicting things online about whether you should shower, like rinse off after the bath. In what I've learned, you don't need to. You can just get out of the bath, towel dry, apply any products you want, any beautiful body care that you have and that feels good to you is totally fine. Even if it's just jojoba oil, sesame oil, you don't have to put anything on. You can just get right into pajamas and call it a day. I've done all of those things and all are wonderful. It's like you don't want to overthink it too much, I think. And you just kind of, its to me, it's an invitation to let your discernment and your intuition guide you to what this practice could be in your life. I am always tired at the end of the day. You know, I'm in like full-time parenting mode of a 17 month old. I'm usually exhausted. I wish I had time for five baths a week. Sometimes it's one bath, sometimes it's four, whatever it is, it's perfect and wonderful. And this is a process. It's not something that you reach this point and your health is perfect. You know, I, as long as we're existing in the world, it's an ongoing process of mitigating exposures um, and not to generate fear because you know, I don't believe at all in all the fear mongering that goes on in eco beauty, but I also don't agree at all 
in the disinformation that steers people away from things that they can proactively or palliatively do to improve their health, of which I believe this is a very, very important tool. So if I've left anything out, I'll try and include it down below in the description box. I'll link all of this stuff for you, uh, the book, the Persoma stuff, the specific salts and baking sodas and whatnot that I use. Yes, all credit to Linda Lancaster. Huge thank you to her for putting this work out in the world. I highly recommend this book. Um, Julie Elliott for all of the work and education that she does through Infiori, I just think is, I don't know, just so aligned with waking up to our birthright to be in control of our health and our bodies and to do everything we can to nurture and fortify and protect that. Thank so. you if you stayed to the end of this per usual. <laughs> it was wordy. I'm thankful for each and every one of you and I really love talking about this kind of content on my platform because I'm just as passionate about the holistic health and healing stuff as I am about the beauty stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to ask questions in the comments and I will answer as best as I know or direct you to resources that I think could be helpful. That's it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.